All right, uh, let's get started. Um, this is going to be sort of a, a recap video of what we discussed in lecture last time. As most of you know, there was a power outage uh, across campus and parts of the city yesterday, so we lost our video lecture uh, for yesterday. So this video is just going to be sort of a recap uh, of what we missed uh, in the recording. So uh, if you recall, we were discussing uh, how to design reinforced concrete beams uh, for shear. Uh, and our, our base uh, expression basically just comes from our fundamental uh, LRFD uh, equation that states that the nominal or the design resistance, VVN, has to be greater than or equal to VVU. And we say, well, since VVN is equal to the capacity of the concrete plus the capacity provided by the steel, and since what we're trying to do is solve for the, the stirrup spacing, all we have to do really is just solve for S. We recognize that VS is just the area in shear times Fy times the number of stirrups per beam depth, which is D divided by S. Do a little bit of algebra, rearrange, solve for S, and we get the expression that you see down below. Now there's a, a few caveats that are associated with this. Uh, for instance, um, ACI uh, states that while you don't necessarily need stirrups from a strength standpoint in some of the regions of low shear, uh, ACI dictates that you must provide stirrups anywhere that uh, the shear is greater than or equal to half of VVC. Uh, if, if the shear is a little bit higher than that, you technically don't need them for capacity, but again, ACI states that no matter what, you must place them there. Now, in most cases, you're allowed to begin your design at what we call VU star, which is basically just the, the shear backed off uh, D away from the support, and that's to eliminate uh, you know, uh, concentrated stress effects, allowing the stress to uh, propagate throughout the section. Usually in those instances, we're interested more in force transfer and bearing effects and what have you, so we're allowed to back that off in most cases. There's some cases where we can't, for instance, if you're applying load directly to the tension flange of a, a reinforced concrete section, you're not allowed to do that. Also, if you're looking at a, a corbel uh, in, in a reinforced concrete column, you can't do that. Uh, some good examples of that you'll find in the uh, uh, Marshall University parking garage right next to the biotech center. You'll see Corbel's uh, supports uh, all over the place in there. Now, in terms of design, um, you, know, you could use uh, your minimum stirrup spacing across the board, but that tends to be pretty uneconomical. So we can shave uh, some stirrups off of a beam by trying to employ the maximum spacing wherever we can. Or we can say, well, why don't we um, back that off a little bit by using the following limit. Now this is one of the two that we can use. Um, this is the one just based off of maximum spacing in general that if you're going to provide stirrups, you must at least provide some rudimentary amount, um, <coughs> even if you don't need them from a capacity standpoint. S max basically says that uh, you have the following two limits. Uh, we hardly ever uh, broach the, uh, the first one, so we just use that one for design purposes. So our first maximum limit we take is the minimum of D over 2, or 24 inches. Our second limit we derive from the minimum area for uh, steel. Now, a, uh, a number 3 U-shaped stirrup tends to always meet this limit, uh, no problem, but uh, instead we look at this equation and say, well, instead of trying to choose a stirrup that has the required area, why don't we rearrange this and use this as a limit for our stirrup spacing? So do a little bit of rearranging uh, and we, uh, we get the following expression here. So for the procedure for the design, we have uh, a number of steps. The first thing we have to do is construct the shear diagram and that can be a little bit involved. But again, the idea is to make sure that you're encompassing the problem as a whole. Um, now, there are three regions that you need to identify. You need to identify where the shears are greater than VVC, where you need stirrups for, a, uh, for strength uh, requirements. Uh, section two is anywhere between uh, VVC and half of VVC. That's where the concrete technically uh, carries the capacity. So you should be employing uh, maximum stirrup spacings in region two. You can always check your design later to see. And then section number three is where you don't need to place any stirrups at all, anywhere the shear is uh, less than or equal to half of VVC. All right, to start the design off, we'll calculate the shear D away from the support, and at that um, location, determine what is the required stirrup spacing, and we'll use that for the purposes of beginning our design. 
here you can see a, uh, a pretty straightforward uh, calculation. Again, just rearranging that uh, expression on the original slide. <coughs> to improve the design, we can try and employ that maximum spacing anywhere that we're, um, uh, first off, anywhere that we need it, but at the very least in the regions where the concrete carries the shear. So we have the two limits and we choose the most stringent one, which is the smaller of what we see here, the smaller of S max one and S max two. And then try and uh, incorporate this spacing into our design to shave the number of stirrups. Um, at the very, uh, you know, once you start your design at the very least, um, you know, you should have a pretty efficient design using uh, these two increments if you want add another increment in between, and repeat your steps. Now, as a final step, you should validate the following limit to make sure that your maximum stirrup spacing um, selection was valid, but this tends to almost never be a concern. Okay, so we were looking at the following example last time where we were to design uh, stirrups for this beam using U-shaped stirrups, and here you can see the parameters. It's 20 foot long, it's 4 KSI concrete, 60 KSI steel, normal weight, the dimensions of the beam are on the right. Simply supported uniformly distributed load. The factored load is pretty heavy. It's 11.5 tips per foot. <coughs> Excuse me. Going into the design uh, parameters, start listing the properties. And then uh, right off the bat, um, like I said, our first step is to compute the shear diagram. So we have to go through and um, do the, uh, the structural analysis. Now we sort of skipped that a little on this example because our previous example was a problem very similar. So we had already covered that. Um, so we just used the same equation that shear is uh, the distributed load times L over 2 minus X. Uh, we rearranged that to not only get the shear at given points but the X distance uh, at given points as well. So the idea is the upper equation in the blue box is at a given point on the beam tell me what the shear is. The lower equation is for a given shear value, where does that occur on the beam? So it's basically the same equation, just rearranged for two different variables. <coughs> now to start identifying critical points on the, um, on the shear diagram, we need to start looking at the concrete capacity, which is a constant. So V sub C is two lambda BWD squared of FC prime. We're dealing with normal weight concrete, so lambda is one. Uh, the width of the beam is 16 inches, D is 25 inches. Uh, remember the square root of FC prime, you plug in PSI, you get out PSI. So when you look at all of your units for this, um, your initial calculation, plug and chug, should come out in pounds. Uh, divide that by 1,000 and you get about 50.5 kips. So we then calculate phi VC. Remember phi for shear is a constant 0 0.75. And then calculate half of phi VC and you get about 37.9 and ni about 19 uh, kips, uh, uh, respectively. Now for the plot, we really need to indicate three values, or we need, we need three more values for the plot. VU star, which is the shear at x equals d, we use that upper equation in the box and get about 91 kips. Then we need the points on the beam where we reach a capacity of PVC and a capacity of half of PVC, so we use the lower equation in that box on the previous panel. And that gives us about 80 inches and about 100 inches. So if we advance, you should have a plot that looks something about like this. So the blue solid line indicates our shear diagram that we use for design, and we're really just zooming in on one half of the shear diagram on either end. Now, Technically, the shear diagram extends all the way up to 115 kips, which is the beam reaction, but we really don't need that for design. We can start our design based off of the VU star, and we use that constant value up until we reach an X distance of 25 inches, because that's the shear at X equals D, which is 25 inches. And then we've labeled on the uh, shear diagram where phi VC and half of phi VC occur on the diagram, and those occur at, again, 80.4 inches and 100.2 inches. So we look at the diagram and we've really identified three regions of interest. The regions where the stirrups are needed, the region where the concrete carries the shear, and where there's no stirrups required. Uh, so if we want to keep or come up with a simple description for our design goal, it would be to lay out stirrups 
from the very beginning of the beam at x equals 0 to just past x equals 100 inches at 100.2. And that's where we concluded our example last time. Or no, sorry, take that back. Last time we looked at, let's look at our starting S value. So we started uh, our design on that VU star, which is, um, uh, sorry, uh, started that design based uh, on a shear of 91.04 kips. Plug and chug into our S required equation. Again, that's just rearranging the fundamental. Phi Vn has to be greater than or equal to Phi U uh, expression. To get a stirrup spacing of around 4.6 inches, um, you could probably get by with using 4.5, but for the purposes of this design, I figure let's keep it simple and let's use an S value of 4 inches. So a, a very simple design right off the bat could be we start our first stirrup at 2 inches, which is a pretty common value to either start it at 2 inches or at least half that first increment. So we start our first stirrup at 2 inches, and then we ask ourselves, well, if we have to reach... Um, a stirrup sp or a, a distance of 100.2, we've already traversed two inches, that leaves us 98.2 inches. How many increments of four inches must we traverse to reach that, uh, that final destination of 100.2? And the answer is 25. So this would be a, a, a typical or a, a first go through of the design to place our first stirrup at two inches and use four inch increments until we go past 100.2. And that would yield 26 stirrups on one end of the beam or 52 stirrups for the entire beam uh, altogether because this layout only gets us to mid-span. So 52 stirrups total. Now, what we're going to see here in a little bit is that we should be able to take that design and cut it down a little bit. Okay, so since all we have done is incorporated the stirrup spacing at the region of worst shear, why don't we try and trim that down a little bit by using our maximum stirrup spacing. So, we have two S max values that we have to compute. The first one is the minimum of D over 2 for 24 inches, which is the minimum of D for this beam is 25 inches over 2 for 24 inches. Now, D over 2 is going to be 12 and a half, so that's 12 and a half inches. Now, for S max 2, we have to do a little bit of a calculation on the side first, if you will. So on the side, I'm going to calculate 0 0.75 times the square root of FC prime, which is 0 0.75 times the square root of, remember, put in PSI, get out PSI. So this comes out to 47.43 PSI. And, and the reason for doing that, I'm going to escape from this for a second and go back to the PowerPoint. If you look at your S max 2, which is right here, basically what we have to do is calculate the maximum of 0.75 square root of FC prime and 50. So I went ahead and did that on the side, and observing this equation, it's very clear that 50 PSI is what's going to govern. So going back to the calcs, I can say, therefore, S max 2 is AB FYT divided by BW times 
And since we've already determined that the maximum of these two is 50 psi, I'll just go ahead and plug in 50 psi. Which is, let's see, AB, number three U-shaped stirrups, 0.22. 60 KSI for the steel divided by 16 inches times 50 PSI. Plug and chug and that will give you 16.5 inches. So if I investigate this value and this value, I have to choose the more stringent from these two. So I would say that S max is the minimum, which is 12.5. And for the purposes of this example, just to keep things simple for our design, I'll say use S equals 12 inches. Okay. All right, so now I've got this new S value. I know that I'm going to be able to apply it in certain regions. Really what I want to get for this S value is the most bang for my buck. So what I want to do is refer back to the shear diagram and ask myself, if I use a stirrup spacing on 12 in of S equals 12 inches, using that stirrup spacing, where on the shear diagram does that capacity occur? In other words, if I start at the very left of the beam and work my way towards the right, at what point am I allowed to start using that value of S equals 12 inches? So I'm going to determine my range for S equals 12 inches. And this is a pretty straightforward calculation. We start off by computing Vs, which is the area in shear, or the area of shear reinforcement, times your yield stress, times the number of stirrups per beam depth, or D divided by S, which is 0 0.22 times uh, let's see, 60 KSI times our beam depth of 25 inches divided by our stirrup spacing, which we're evaluating at 12 inches. And then this yields 27.5 kips. All right, VVN then equals VVC plus VVS. Now we computed VVC uh, way earlier in the problem, so we don't need to redo that. Uh, and it's 37.947 plus phi, always for shear is uh, oops, 0 0.70, 0 0.75 times 27.5 kips. And then 58.572. And then lastly, let's determine where on the shear diagram that occurs. So that's just 115 kips using that equation on the first panel. Minus uh, 58.572 kips and then divided by the slope of the shear diagram, which is the distributed load. And then that gives you 4.907, mine came out a little strange, uh, feet, which equals uh, 58.88 inches. So one important takeaway from this uh, uh, step that you see here, this step four, is uh, using an S of 12 inches, we were able to translate that 
into an X distance of 58.88 inches. And that might not um, uh, mean a whole lot right now, but when we go into refinement of our design, I'm going to show you uh, a table that will um, uh, expand on this looking at different stirrup spacings. And it's basically just taking step four and, and grunting through it uh, over and over. So let me go ahead and start a new panel. So So now we can sort of uh, redo our design. And before we do this, I want to sort of verbally write out the steps uh, for our design, our goal for our design. So the first step is going to be place our first stirrup at two inches. Um, as is conventional. And then we're going to use four inch stirrup spacing until x equals what? Well, before we had four inch stirrup spacing all the way to the end of our region of design, but now we've got another spacing to consider. According to our previous calculations, we're allowed to use 12 inch spacing at x equals 58 inches, 58.88 uh, inches. So the idea is we're going to start off our design, you know, barring that, that first stirrup at 2 inches. We're going to try and use 4 inch stirrup spacing up until x equals 58.88 inches. Then we're going to use 12 inch spacing. until x equals 100.2. So when you see the design that we generate here in a second, you'll see how that, that evolves. So let's look at design number two. So we place the first stirrup at two inches. So that's two inches of the span. So we've already covered two inches. Now, our next goal is to use, let's see, four inch spacing. So we've covered 50, so we have 58.88 inches of span that we need to cover. We've already covered two inches with that first stirrup. So that yields 58.88 or 58.88 minus two inches, that puts us at 56.88. So how many stirrups do we need to place with four inch spacing? Well, see, if we place, let's say if we place 14, that would equal 56, and that wouldn't quite get us there because that would only be 58 total. If I sum that up, that'd be 58. So I can't place 14, that isn't going to work. I would have to place 15, so that would be 60, and that would be 62. That'll get us to the 58.88 and a little past it. 14 stirrups won't quite cut it. So so our answer is we're going to have to place 15 at 4. That'll be 60 inches. So we've already traversed a total of 62 inches of the beam. We ask ourselves, our next stirrup spacing is, four, or is 12 inches. So we have 62 inches traversed. We have 100.2 that we need to reach. So that's 40.2 inches that we need to cover. We can get that with four stirrups. So that's 48 inches. So sum this up, 1 and 15, 16. That's 20 stirrups. And that's 110 inches. So 40 total. And that's a far cry from what we were looking at last uh, in our previous uh, uh, design. In our previous design, 
we had 52 stirrups. So, you know, we, we definitely shaved off quite a bit of steel in our design. And uh, as I stated uh, in our last lecture, if, if you're going to uh, design a beam, uh, it might not seem to, you know, be a big deal if all you're looking at is a single beam. But if this beam is going to be repeated a thousand times in a structure, cutting off 12 stirrups, you know, uh, uh, that's a lot of man hours and a lot of steel cut off of your project. So that's definitely uh, worth considering. Now, uh, before I go into the next step, um, I want to go back to the previous panel and go down a little bit and, and look at this step four because I want to illustrate again um, what, this, uh, what we did in step four. We took a given uh, stirrup spacing, in this case S equals 12 inches, and from that we computed an X distance of 58.88 inches. So, <coughs> excuse me. So based on a given S value, it's basically plug and chug to get an X equals 58.88. Now our stirrup uh, spacings have to be anywhere from X equals, or from S equals 4 inches to S equals 8 inches. So what I want to do is look at some additional increments of spacing. A little bit ahead of myself. All right. Now, just to complete the table so you see where these values are coming from, I'm going to look at the following increments. Now, I'm looking at these values because they're nice sort of even multiples. We're dealing with S equals 4 inches and S equals 12 inches. So I'm trying to look at some you know, pretty straightforward, easy values to deal with. So if you have an S value of 12 inches, we've already computed that that will yield an X of 58.88. If you go through and do the same thing for the other values, you'll get 37.36, 48.12, and 54.58. I urge you all to uh, at least just pick one and make sure that you're getting the same values. It's a fairly straightforward calculation. So what I'm doing there is basically saying, if I've got a given stirrup spacing, where can I begin that design? Or where can I begin that stirrup spacing in my design? Now, the, the, the benefit of that is I can come up with an additional design that maybe trims off a few more stirrups. And I'll just go ahead and give you this one and then explain it. And let me clear that one up. And then four. And then, so if this is 18 stirrups on one end of the beam, that's 36 stirrups total. Okay. So, let me sort of briefly explain what's going on in this uh, design. So again, we start off our first stirrup at X equals, uh, or with a uh, stirrup spacing of two inches. And then we use the same process as before. We use a four inch spacing as far as we need to. Only in this, I've decided to add an extra increment of six inches of stirrup spacing. So really the value you kind of need to pay attention to is this one right here. Because I start my first stirrup at two inches and then I ask, well, how many four inch increments do I need to traverse until I reach 37.36? And you do the math, and I need nine of those increments. So nine at four inches, there's the 36 that you see. And then now I can say from that, I can go and use the 12 inches and ask, well, how far do I need to use uh, 
uh, or six, sorry, six inch, sorry. Uh, I can use six inch spacing. How far do I need to use those until I uh, hit the, uh, the 58.88 that you see up here? So <laughs> you should be able to follow through this pretty easily. We will do a more uh, comprehensive example uh, next time. And as I stated, you probably should check uh, uh, limit number seven. We'll do that in the example uh, uh, that we'll discuss on uh, Wednesday, which is tomorrow. But as you'll see, in, in no way, shape, or form do you ever uh, tend to uh, uh, violate that limit. You, you're usually way above and beyond uh, meeting that. So with that, that's all we have for this lecture, and we'll continue this uh, next time.